What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, my name's Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review? Today we're looking at Edredor Caledonia. Stick around. So we've got an Edredor today. Edredor is not a very well-known distillery, it's a Highland distillery. Um, and it's odd because it doesn't seem to have much in the way of a core range. What they do have is a 10 year old. They have two versions of a 10 year old. One chill filtered, one unchill filtered. And then they have the 12 year old, which is what we've got here today. Everything else from them is either going to be from their peated range, which is called Balkan, or some kind of special cask release or a wine finish. And I think out of all the Edredor bottlings, this one's going to be the most widely available and well known. As I mentioned earlier, it's called Caledonia. This is their sherried expression. Um, it's a really popular bottle in sort of like online Facebook groups, the whiskey community in general, YouTubers, what have you. Very popular bottle despite being from a more obscure distillery. And generally speaking, I think Edredor as a distillery is pretty well received by the whiskey community, although it is known for having a profile that's not going to be for everyone. Now apparently our name here, Caledonia, is named after a song by a famous Scottish musician called Doogie MacLean. And interestingly enough, apparently he was also involved in the production process. I think he helped choose some of the casts that this whiskey was aged in. And speaking of casts, this is going to be a sherry finished whiskey. Uh, typical sherry finishes are going to be maybe between a few months to up to, let's say two years. Two years is already quite long. Now the finish on this one was apparently four or five years, so that is a super long finish that explains our dark color. At that point it's basically a second maturation. Oddly enough though, on the Edredor website this is described as a single cask whiskey. Now if you're a sherry finished whiskey, it is impossible to be from a single cask. So I don't really know what's going on there. Literally every other resource that I can find describes this as a finished whiskey, and I genuinely think that's what it is, but Edredor itself describes it as a single cask whiskey. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I do believe someone made a mistake. Anyway, we're not going to get too hung up on that. So. Yeah, so this Caledonia, it's not something that's very widely available here in Taiwan. I don't see it in too many shops, but I did finally manage to track down a bottle. And like I said, I've heard a lot of good things about it over the years. 10 years deep in whiskey, this is actually the first Edredor I've ever tried, if you can believe it. So yeah, something I was very curious about. So with that said, why don't we hop into our review and see what this whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that would be greatly appreciated. Now looking at our specs here, we have a nice natural presentation. Our ABV comes in at 46%. We also have no chill filtration and the color is natural. So well done. I'll give you a look at our color here. This is a beautiful dark whiskey. Um, with regards to the look of the bottle, I find this kind of weird. Um, I, I wonder what country it's from. Um, in terms of like information, we do get everything we need. Natural color, unchill filtered, we also have our age, our ABV, not too much fluff on the front. On the back, it's talking about this guy Doogie McLean and his song, so not much about the whiskey, but overall, definitely in terms of information, we're getting everything we need. But the look of the label itself just isn't for me. Uh, I'm gonna give this a presentation score of like two out of five. I find this sort of faded flag in these simple fonts. It's a very outdated kind of retro look. And I'm sure for some of you out there, you'll appreciate that. Maybe there's a, some nostalgic charm to this bottle, but I think my taste, my sensibilities are a little bit more modern and it's just not a look that I connect with. Let's take a look at our nose. Nice. Um, so very, very lush, very juicy. Lots of fruits, so there's oranges in here, there's apples, there's uh, juicy dates, there's raisins, caramelized sugar, honey, um, definitely some like leather and tobacco notes in here as well. There's also sort of like a wet, resinous, oaky note in here. Overall, just a very rich, very complex sherry with a little bit of mustiness worked in. Now for the palate. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So gentle arrival here, um, but then you have this sudden rush of like these dense, intense sherry notes. Start off with some fruitiness, so like uh, plums, cherries, dates, raisins, definitely some oranges, orange zest in here, some dark chocolate, more of that resinous oaky note, wet oak in here, uh, and some honey. Now for the finish.
Mm. So finish never gets too sweet or too cloying. You have some bitter herbs in here. You have some coffee notes and sort of like these roasted notes pulling it back. So definitely some roasted nuts in here. More of that wet oak. We have uh, damp forest floor. Stay with me here. We have some fresh tobacco. There's some cinnamon. Um, there's some red berries in here, red apples, and some dark orange flavored chocolate. This is really rich, really dense, really complex, medium to long in length, but just beautiful stuff. This is a really beautiful whiskey, and I really wasn't sure what to expect when I was approaching this. Like I said, a lot of people really enjoy this bottle, but Plenty of people will also tell you it's not going to be for everyone, that Edredor's got a bit of a funk to it, and it's kind of a hit or miss type whiskey, so I did have to temper my expectations going in. Um, luckily, I was pretty blown away by this one, to be honest. This has a lot going on. It's much more interesting, rich, and complex than your typical entry-level sherry 12-year-old. Now, you definitely do have a little bit of funk with this one, but at the end of the day, it just adds to the character, gives a little bit more personality. Um, personally speaking, I'm okay with funk. I'm a funky guy, wasn't an issue. Um, ultimately, this is a sherry driven whiskey, and I might even go so far as to call it a sherry bomb. Usually I'll reserve the term sherry bomb for something that's maybe cast strength, higher ABV expressions, but this is such a density and intensity of flavor that it really doesn't hit like a 46% whiskey. The density of this whiskey almost reminds me of something like, let's say a Cavalant Solist, if you've ever had one, just an extremely dense, powerful concentration of flavors, very compact, very mouth coating, very rich. Um, you get something similar here, obviously to a lesser degree, but such a great intensity to this whiskey. As someone who loves a big hit of sherry, this one is one that makes me happy. Now, a pretty famous YouTuber gave this a score of 91 a couple years back, and I'm gonna have to agree with that assessment. This is a 91 whiskey for me too. Um, really gorgeous stuff. Like I said, it hits a lot harder. It's a lot punchier than you'd expect it to be. But beyond that, this is just something that's light years ahead of what you would usually get from your typical entry-level sherry 12-year-old. And that funk that I mentioned earlier does add a lot to the character in this one, and I really don't think it's quite as weird or off-putting as a lot of these online reviewers will say. They'll say Edred Dura has sort of like this odd flavor, it's going to be a turnoff. it's not a whiskey for beginners. I don't agree with that. I think generally speaking this is a pretty accessible whiskey. I don't think the funk is over the top, I think it's well integrated. Generally if you like sherry, if you want a nice sweet punchy whiskey, you'll find a lot to like with this one. Now, in terms of value, this is a great deal as far as I'm concerned. Yes, it is going to be a little bit more expensive than your typical entry-level sherry 12-year-old, but trust me, it's worth that extra money. Even at the price that it is, I still feel like I'm getting away with something. This tastes much more expensive than what you're paying for it. Um, beyond that, it's nice to know that this is pretty stable prices internationally. What I pay here in Taiwan is pretty similar to what I'll see on the American websites or Master of Malt, what have you. I think if you're looking for a high quality sherried experience on a budget, it doesn't get much better than this. This whiskey is affordable, it's delicious, it's interesting, it's unique. As far as I'm concerned, it's a win through and through. Definitely one I gotta recommend. All right, that'll be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried Edredor Caledonia? What were your thoughts? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my next video. Bye, guys.